Nuclear regulators in Japan have officially changed their assessment of a leak of highly radioactive water at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. They've raised the leak's classification on an international scale. They say it's the most serious incident at the facility since the initial accident in 2011. Last week, plant operators discovered the leak in a storage tank. They estimate 300 tons of contaminated water escaped. Some of it may have flowed through a ditch and into the ocean. Officials with the Nuclear Regulation Authority decided to raise the leak's severity rating by two levels on the International Nuclear and Radiological Event Scale. They took into account the massive amount of radioactive substances that are believed to be getting into the environment. The scale consists of eight levels. Regulators initially ranked the leak at level one, which is defined as radiological anomaly. A level three event is defined as a serious incident. That classification is given in case of severe radiation contamination with possible health effects on the local population that would be non-lethal. Level 7 represents the most serious incident, a major accident. It indicates a significant release of radioactive materials with potentially widespread health and environmental effects. The initial meltdown and explosion at the Fukushima plant was classified as a level 7 incident. In 1986, Chernobyl disaster uh, was given the same assessment. International Atomic Energy Agency officials supported the rating change on the contaminated water leak. They say the incident can be looked at uh, separately, even though it took place within the larger context of the Fukushima crisis. Workers at the Japanese power company are trying to convince residents they have nothing to fear from a nuclear plant. The employees of Shikoku Electric Power Company want to build community support to restart operations, even as the only two reactors still operating in Japan prepare to go offline. The workers are visiting about 28,000 households near the Ikata plant in Ehime Prefecture, western Japan. They're telling residents about measures the utility has adopted to satisfy new government safety standards. But some people remain cautious. I understand the officials are trying hard, but considering what happened at Fukushima, I still feel there are risks with the plant. The utility is applying for government approval to restart one of the reactors at the plant. Radioactive water has been building up every day at the plant since the accident. It's a growing problem. The short-term solution is storage. There is no long-term solution. NHK World's Noriko Okada walks us through the issue. Workers pour 100 tons of cooling water every day into the three reactors where the meltdown took place. The water comes into direct contact with molten fuel and becomes highly contaminated. Company officials initially thought they would be able to reuse the contaminated water to cool the reactors. But then they discovered groundwater was seeping into the reactor buildings. They had to adapt their plan to address the 400 tons of contaminated water being pumped out every day. The company installed devices that were supposed to filter out the majority of the radioactive substances from the water. But so far, cesium is the only substance they've been able to remove. The stored water remains highly contaminated with other materials. Company officials say they are now storing some 340,000 tons of contaminated water in 1,000 tanks. They plan to add more tanks to increase capacity to 700,000 tons. But the tanks have been hastily built. Experts have often pointed out how vulnerable they are to damage. And this isn't the first time leaks have been found. Company officials have reported another grim figure. 30 trillion becquerels of radionuclide substances have been discharged into the ocean since May 2011. They say 950 trillion becquerels of cesium had leaked into the ocean before that date. That means about one quadrillion becquerels of radionuclide have been discharged into the Pacific. One expert says stopping the flow of contaminated water isn't enough. He is calling for more research into its effect. 
Radioactive substances are accumulating in the seabed and are being consumed by fish. High levels of radiation have been detected in some of the fish. We don't know the mechanism or how it's happening. This is something we haven't fully investigated. Kanda says information about the contamination must be fully disclosed. He says that's the only way to allay growing fear and distrust in Japan and around the world. Noriko Okada, NHK World. Officials at Japan's nuclear watchdog are determined to make safety standards in their industry more stringent. They say they'll force power companies to regularly test nuclear plants for resistance to earthquakes and tsunami. The officials at the Nuclear Regulation Authority agreed to make the checks a legal requirement. They oblige utilities to conduct so-called stress tests using computer analysis every five years. Plant operators will also have to calculate the probability of severe accidents such as the one at Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. The regulator plans to introduce a range of new safety measures by December after consulting the public.